Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. If you're new to my training videos about the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations, you might find it as bewildering as this network of lakes. There's videos to the left, videos to the right, and some big ones up ahead. Let me take a minute of your time to lay out the map and walk you through my video portfolio. And stick around, I'll give you some great tips for succeeding at the exams. All right, here's the complete video training portfolio in a nutshell. At the top of the heap is the introduction and overview to the new 2019 Canadian drone rules. Here you'll find me sitting in front of a wood-burning stove with some back bacon, talking about, at a very high level, the new rules. I then get into more depth in the next layer of the portfolio. I have a study guide for the Canadian Basic Operations pilot exams and a more in-depth study guide for the Advanced Operations drone pilot exams. I also have a short piece that talks about some of these topics of, of the Basic Operations exam in a little more detail. The next layer of the portfolio is an in-depth explanation of each and every one of the regulations. I call this the Droner's Guide to the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations. It starts with an introduction and then eight linked modules that talk about specific sets of rules, translating them from Transport Canada's complex language into plain everyday English. I'll talk about the content of these in a few moments. The final layer in the portfolio is a series of special topics. The first one is called How High Can You Fly? This covers the maximum altitude that you can fly under the new regulations and how buildings affect those maximums. The second video is called Aerodromes Explained, examining airports, military aerodromes, seaplane landing zones, and everything in between. Very important, particularly if you are driving towards your advanced operations drone pilot exams. Coming soon, I'll have more videos, starting with how to use the pilot logbook and how to use the mobile phone Canadian drone pilot app. Now that you see how this portfolio works, let's talk about which ones you should watch in which order. If you're intending to get your pilot certificate for basic operations, I would recommend you focus in on the green outlined videos on this page. By the way, there's a link in the description below this video to a copy of this handy visual index, I guess you'd call it, for my drone training portfolio. All of the pictures have links directly to the videos and it's a bit easier to navigate than the YouTube playlist. So for basic operations, I would re recommend that you watch the introduction and overview, focus in on the study guide, and then the study guide uh, uh, let's discuss video, and then watch the droner's guide videos in order to have a clear understanding of the new regulations. You may want to skip the modules two and three of this series if you're only going after the basic operations because they talk about items that are more pertinent to the advanced operations uh, exam. You definitely want to watch the How High Can You Fly video. If you're interested in pursuing your advanced operations certificate, you'll want to watch everything from the basics, but you'll also want to watch the study guide for Canadian advanced drone pilot exams. That's a long video, but it's worth every second of it and then pick up the two modules that you might have skipped from the Droner's Guide, modules two and three. And you will absolutely need to watch the Aerodromes Explained video to understand all the different classes of aerodromes in the Canadian airspace and what, how, how you need to fly around each one of those. Here's how the Droner's Guide videos are structured. As I said, there are nine videos, starting with an introduction and overview, and then eight modules. Module one covers how to register your aircraft and the requirements around that, and an explanation of what basic operations are. Module two talks about what advanced operations are and how a flight review is, is taken care of. Module three examines the requirements for drones that are qualified for advanced operations, and also talks about the uh, Special Flight Operations Certificates, or SFOCs. Module 4 talks about the basic safety regulations. 
Module 5, discusses pre-flight checks and all of the rules around those. Module 6 covers where you can fly and with which kind of pilot certificates. Module 7 covers a number of special cases such as flying at night, flying with FPV goggles, and things of that nature. Last but not least, Module 8 covers procedures. It sounds a little boring, but it's really important to understand what procedures, checklists, and information you as a drone pilot are expected to know and have at your fingertips when flying your drone. All right, so that's the Droner's Guide video set. I really do encourage you to watch the entire thing. As I mentioned, you might want to skip modules two and three, at least the first pass through these videos, uh, if you're only interested in the basic operations. Now, I mentioned that I might have some tips for you for getting through the exams. Let's walk through these. First exam tip, and by the way, these exams are really tough. They are not a cakewalk. They are online and they are uh, an open book, so you might think it'd be pretty easy, but as you watch some of my videos, you'll quickly discover that the, the exams are anything but easy. So a few tips. Don't panic. You'll encounter questions that you will not believe and don't waste time fussing about it. Just get on and try to answer it. So that's an overall tip. Uh, more specifically, I would recommend you find a quiet place with no interruptions when you're taking your exam. Having kids jumping around and dogs barking, that will not help you concentrate and you need to be able to concentrate when you're taking these exams. Ensure you have a good solid high speed internet connection. If you're in a rural community and you don't have high speed internet, I'd really recommend you uh, perhaps go into a library or something like that in order to take this. It will help speed up your searches, it will help speed up your uh, whole exam experience, and you don't have a lot of time to, to waste, so I would encourage you to have good high-speed internet. And if possible, have two screens available to you when you're taking the exam. Uh, that way you can have the exam itself up on one screen and all your reference material and searching uh, windows on another screen. Have a paper and pen handy. Not only do some questions require you to sketch out little diagrams to really decipher what they're driving at, but it's also handy to keep some lists, and I'll talk about that in a second. Aim to pass the exam, obviously, but don't be surprised if you don't pass on the first run. You can take the exam as many times as you want, with 24 hours between each attempt. The key thing is not to fuss about failing, but learn from your mistakes and understand where the gaps are in your knowledge so that the next time you take the exam you won't stumble on those same areas. Let's talk a bit about studying. First of all, I would recommend you watch all of the Dawn Drones on videos we just discussed related to the new regulations. I know this sounds a little self-serving, but honestly the amount of feedback I get from people saying that my videos helped them to prepare for the exam, they can't all be wrong. So. Modules uh, 1 and 4 to 8 in the Droner's Guide are applicable to both the basic and advanced operations exam, and modules 2 and 3 focus in on the advanced operations. How high can you fly is important, and the Aerodromes Explained video is really key to understanding the difference between an aerodrome that you can fly over and an airport that you can't get anywhere near. In addition to studying the videos that I've put out, I strongly recommend you familiarize yourself with the reference documents that I list out in each of the study guide videos, particularly the AIM document. This is the Aviation Information Manual put out by Transport Canada. It covers a ton of information. It's about 500 odd pages and it's broken down into these sections that I list down here. During the exam itself, I strongly encourage you to follow this lad's lead and stick your tongue out the side of your mouth. Seriously, uh, have, have, all, sorry, have all of your reference documents open, on your, ideally on your second monitor screen, so that you can quickly access them and you can search through them. And I encourage you to practice that searching so that you can control F and quickly ter find terms uh, within those documents. 
watch your time while you're taking the, the exams. The time is shown on the user interface, the time remaining. Um, if you get stuck on a question, note it down, and I'll talk about this in a minute, and move on. Don't lose time struggling with one particular question. You can always go back and, and cover questions that you leave. Do answer every question on the exam. The user interface allows you to quickly spot the questions you haven't answered yet, and it allows you to go forwards and backwards through your exam. So before you submit, make sure you've covered every single question. You might have to guess at some. I certainly did. Um, but before guessing, make sure you eliminate the obviously wrong choices. There's only four choices in each of the multiple choice uh, questions. So if you eliminate two of them, you have a 50-50 chance of getting it, the, the uh, answer right, even if you guess. There's no penalty for wrong answers. Now, I mentioned keeping some lists on a piece of paper during the exam. And here's the list I recommend you keep. Question, or, or list number one, is a list of the question numbers and just the number of questions that you totally guessed at. So if you guessed at question number two, just quickly jot down a number two headed on a list that says questions I totally guessed at. You can prepare these lists in advance. List number two are the questions you answered fairly confidently but you weren't certain of. You might want to go back and have a look at those. And list number three is important the next time you take the exam. Terms and acronyms that you didn't know or you weren't sure about. What's a METAR? What's a RPAS for that matter? So jot these terms and acronyms down quickly as you're going through the exam questions and that way if you don't pass the first time you'll have some clue as, some of, uh, as to areas that you should focus in on the next time you take the exam. But within your exam, particularly in the, in the basic exam, you have plenty of time to go back and review your answers. So use these lists to help you focus in on the questions that you really want to spend some more time on. So the questions that you totally guessed at, the questions that you weren't certain of, and to look up some terms and acronyms that you might not have recognized the first time. Envision success. I know it's a bit of a mind game, but it really does seem to help to be able to imagine yourself at the end of the exam, uh, seeing your results, seeing you pass, and having the thrill of, yay, I, I passed the exam. So do try that, and best of luck with your exam. I hope this video has helped you to understand how my training portfolio is put together and how to walk through them depending upon whether you're taking the basic operations exam or the advanced operation exam. And I hope your, the training tips that I give you at the end help you to succeed in your exams. Good luck. Hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe below and leave a comment. Thank you.